Okay guys, today as you uh, see, milk is on the brain. Um, we actually had some requests for the video, if you remember the um, the pump review video for our cow milk, our milk pump. Um, we've had a lot of people question that pump and how it works, how to break it down, how to put it back together to make sure they got a good suction. I've been through it all, so this video is for all those who had this milk pump or are thinking about getting this milk pump, a little more troubleshooting, a little bit more breaking it down, a little bit more personal. So, if it doesn't interest you, keep up. We do have other vlogs going on today and tomorrow. We just wanted to get this one out for some of the ones that requested it. So, hope you enjoyed the video and hope this helps. If you have any questions about this milk pump, let us know and we will get them answered for you. So first we have our stainless steel cups with liners, just typical suction cups that we have. There are four of those. Now if you see some of them are off, we do pop these off, clean inside, clean inside, and then wipe them all out, put them back together. So we have the, the actual cups, the, the liners that go in them, and basically of course that's the most important. Now you have to remember you have two, um, basically two lines that's coming off these. The one of course is milk suction so remember that okay so then well, let's talk about these now you have eight basically um shorter um tubes these four and then these four now have you have this middle piece um this is basically what builds your suction and comes from your your actual vacuum pump but basically we've already got these on there these are just straight no different looking tubes other than they're four all identical now here's the difference why we use those four versus these four so i'm sorry we're working on this uh, old chester drawer that's been distressed from my wife so um it's got a flat surface so excuse the uh the distressed look behind this but anyway so let's look at these now you see the difference these tubes are completely uh, one cylinder there's no different raises it slides on here so it gives a little lip right there but basically this has a built-in lip all the way down on the very end Reason being is this is what your milk is going to go through, but that little lip will be what connects to your actual suction and your vacuum. This is actually what runs your suction. This gives you air to breathe or not breathe. See the O-ring there? You want to make sure it's all in, intact. But basically that is what goes on top of this right here. So we'll slide this on. The thick knot right there will actually go over this, and that's what helps it from tearing but also gives it where that room where that milk can come through there and suck um, suck into your pump so you see that's got a, a opening right there we'll turn it like this so you can see it so you see there's where uh, that goes and of course there's where your milk connector goes but we'll go a little bit more in detail once we get to this point uh, here's your top now this is the part that everybody struggles with we have four holes and we have to have two suctions one milk and then one vacuum so we'll go over that once we start hooking it up, but this top is so important. The thing you want to look for, make sure your O-ring gasket, which is your big gasket on top, all is all, in top, uh, all intact. It just flips over this lid of the stainless steel bucket. You want to make sure you have a good connection there. Now, the only other thing you want to look at here too is this, this little white um, cap. That cap has an O-ring around it. Basically, you can unscrew that. Listen, let's see if we can hear it. You hear that? Inside that is a, is a um, ball bearing. Now, that ball bearing needs to stay oiled. You can use pump oil. You can use vegetable oil. I like using vegetable oil or grapeseed oil, what we use to cook with. That way, just in case some of this goes in our milk, which it shouldn't, it is not harmful to us. So, we use like vegetable oil, grapeseed oil, you know, olive oil. Just you want to make sure that that O-ring is, or excuse me, that O-ring is okay but that also you're getting that ball bearing jumping around because that's actually what basically pulsates into your milker. So make sure, you know, you can just unscrew this right here. Make sure your O-ring, of course, is intact, what you see. And you see that's wetness there. That's good. That means that it's got plenty of oil and that little ball bearing sits right down that hole. Um, if you don't have suction, most of the time that could be an issue. If, you, if your ball bearing is like stuck in there, you need to pop it out and you need to give it some oil or just, you know, oil it some way. So we got that back connected. So you see that, you see this, you see this cool little gadget Misty built to, to clean the pumps. You see the two hoses. Of course, your thicker hose, it comes from, uh, that's your milk hose. And then the little hose is your vacuum hose. You can buy these aftermarket and once these wear out, 
you see ours starts fading a little bit because we've cleaned it so much if they start wearing out hey go go to home depot go to any uh, local hardware store they will have this exact hosing you just need to make sure you get the right sizes we zip tie ours because that way it keeps it all together and that way you don't have to worry about all these hoses bouncing around touching the ground touching the cow just keeps it cleaner so i challenge you to to zip tie it all together so now we've got all the parts now here's one more part i'm going to show you and we'll talk a little bit more about it as we hook up boom that's the most important part when it comes to your suction this little pump is not the best quality pump so you need to have helpings that make this suction that sometimes that vacuum doesn't want to work right these little red suction caps from midi supply is worth their nine dollars and 88 cents is what i paid for mine so you, i challenge you he's here for the party i challenge you to uh buy these these are definite uh, i don't use them now for one of my cows elsa because elsa is so high up and I can pretty much put them on there, but Allie, I still have to use two because Allie is so low to the ground. And this, the thing about this, this keeps building your suction, but also when they go in these cannules and all of a sudden say this thing pops to the ground, if that thing's in there, you're not getting your milk suction pump uh, dirty. So that's, that's, that's good because then you got to stop everything and clean it again. So $9.88 worth its money. All right, so now let's put it all together. That way you can see how it's put together and then we're going to take it to the milk pump and actually run it. Okay, so we have our actual cups, our suction liners. What we're going to do is hook up what needs to go on it first. So basically, remember, these here. So what we're going to do is go ahead and put this on. Remember, using the side that's not got the, uh, the extra little lip on it. And you just want to roll it on there just like this. And there you go. There's the first one done. Let's get all the rest of them done, and we'll kind of get to the next step. Let's put the last one on here. Okay, there you go. So we got those hooked up. Now, let's hook these to this uh, the actual what brings up pressure for the milker. So again, using your big side. Now, you want to face your cannula, your vacuum cannula, needs to face inward towards this. So when you put it on here, it needs to be where that cannula is facing in as well. Got those together. Now you, you don't have any suction built in yet. So what we got to do is build the suction and then we'll actually hook it to the hose and we'll be ready to rock. Okay, so we're going to actually line these up. So your whole, your basically your hoses are going to come in together. One here, which is going to be your vacuum and one here, which is your milk. So again, the reason we wanted those cannules turned in, like I said, is because you're going to slide this on here. Right, just like that for every cannule. So there's the first one. And so basically it's going to sit just like this inside. So let's go and get all the rest of them hooked up and uh, we'll move on to hooking up to the hose. Okay, so you see it, got it all hooked up. Basically the way we were installing it was upside down, just like we had the two hose bottoms together and where they're going to actually shoot out to each pump, basically the vacuum and also to the milk itself. And this is how you're basically going to have underneath the cap is you're going to build the suction and then put them right up on the cow. So turn it over. We've got it set up where all four is hooked to each other. This O-ring is tight. And so now we're going to hook it up to the hoses. And that's really the last step before we actually go into either, you know, cleaning your pump or milking. So uh, here's my milk pump. This is just a cart I bought at a local hardware store. You can see it keeps the mud on it and not on this, uh, uh, milk pump this milk pump we've had I'll leave a link to it down in the description Basically, you can buy this off Amazon. They sell about four different versions of it But basically it's the same company somebody just in America buys it uh, From overseas and pretty much puts their different name on it, but this is the pump. So you see We've already got this hooked up. You saw that from inside. There's the big line going to the milk The little line going to the vacuum. They're hanging basically suspended with these cords. So now you're stuck with this. Okay, so now we have four spots to put hoses. You have your gauge, your vacuum line, and then your milk, and then vacuum, suc vacuum suction line to pull your milk out, and that gives you a pulsation. So now we're gonna go and hook this up, and then we're gonna kind of troubleshoot some of this to show 
what we had to do to make sure you're getting a good suction all the way throughout. So first, let's say these. What are we doing? Now, I always turn my, my top. Now, you can turn your top any way. Let's move this out of the way. But this is the way I turn my top, where I'm facing, and I've got two cannules looking at me, and the two cannules up here where hoses will go on. Well, you know you got two spots for your big hoses and two spots for your little hoses. So automatically, you know your milk has got to go in there. Well, you're not, your milk is not going to cross over your oiled ball bearing. So where, where else could you put it? Well, there's only one other hole that it can go to, which is right here. So this is where your milk comes in. It comes directly into the suction top and basically goes straight into the bottom. Never goes through the ball bearing. And then the only other one that goes in here is just simply the little one. So now, if my suction is coming from here with the ball bearing, what does that mean? If my milk is here and what goes next to it is simply the little hose for the vacuum. So the vacuum hose goes right here. And this is what the suction is building up. It's pulsating with that ball bearing. The suction is coming from this here. If you put your finger over there, you would feel that or either put your finger over the vacuum hose, which is where that's gonna go. Basically, it has to find a way to have suction. So it goes through, hits that ball bearing, and then hits this, and of course that actually is what pulls the milk from the pump. Actually pumping it out, pulsating it out of your cow. So let's get this on here. Try to do this one-handed, so. All right, so you're just going to ease it on and I, just make sure you have a good, you know, make sure it goes on pretty good. So there, now you've got these lines facing your, your actual uh, claw, what they call this, basically all this setup. So you, there's, your, there's your first two lines. Well, that only leaves two more lines and two more sizing. So automatically you have your um, gauge. So your gauge is very important. It's a longer hose, so you, you, know, you just want to kind of loop it around and it helps kind of get everything out of your way. So I loop it around, you know, just kind of go under here, whatever you want to do there, and then basically put it here. That's what actually reads and tells you what your pressure is, your suction. Make sure you got good, good, good suction coming out of your cow. If you need to back your pressure off because it's sucking too hard, you don't want to hurt your cow. The last thing you want to do is hurt your cow with too much suction from your vacuum. So there's that. Lastly, is actually your vacuum hose. Now this hose does not go to the cow at all. So you can see it has, you know, it just kind of gets funky. You wash it, but pretty much coming out, coming out of that pump, that's oil, it's a vacuum oil. You need to make sure you're using some kind of gear oil or vacuum oil that you feed through. Um, basically that, uh, there's, there's basically two nuts, one on this side, or bolt, excuse me, and then one on the other side. Make sure you're putting it in there and that's how it keeps this thing lubricated well. Uh, you see there's an O-ring. Now my O-ring in here, it's not in the best shape. You can replace that. It's just a, basically a gasket. It's just a big old O-ring. So that's another thing you need to check every once in a while. But basically, let's put this on. Go strictly. We're gonna kind of go underneath here and get it on there, right there. So recap. We've got the little spider with the thin, small ends coming off going to the middle. The little vacuums on the outside of your cups. The big suction the big cylinders right here with the big notch coming where your milk is actually going in each side going in over your clear milk liner those two go all the way down coming to the right side of the pump if you're looking at it like i am with your ball bearing set right in the middle your little side coming off which is your vacuum and your milk going directly into your barrel or to your big stainless steel tub you only have one more small, so that's gonna be what goes to your pressure gauge. And lastly, you'll have one more that's actually gonna to go to your vacuum. Remember, none of these suctions, this one, this one, and this one, never touch milk. We do clean them, but they never touch milk. This is the only active hose that touches any kind of moisture or milk. If you have moisture in any one of these, you may have an issue. You need to find out where your moisture is and get it out of there. You do not need moisture in those three hoses. So. Here's what we're gonna go from now. So easy, easy, easy does it. You got it, you plug it in, no big deal there. Now, let's turn it on and I'll show you three or four things that we did to make our pump work better. Okay, first, it's ready to go. Now, when we plug this thing in, it's gonna be loud, so what we'll do is we will actually turn it on, let it run, I'll show you something, show how we, how we actually um, troubleshot it. Now, first and foremost, you gotta have oil. So make sure that oil is in that. Now it should come with oil, 
but sometimes they don't. Make sure the oil is in there. Now, before we go any further, you need to make sure your belt is tight. When we got ours, it shipped from, you know, who knows where overseas. And this little spindle, basically it, it goes up and down, that bottom spindle there, or this one, depending on what model you have, goes up and down. So you can take a, just basically a, a typical, uh, you know, crescent wrench of some sort or monkey wrench or just a set of wrenches and move your spindle. If you're not getting pump, a good suction or you feel like it's, it's slipping, it's because your belt's not tighter, tighter uh, tight, excuse me. You need to drop. If you look right in here, you need to drop. There's the bolt right there. You need to drop that spindle. That way it holds your belt tight. I had that same problem where it just slipped every once in a while and then that slip lost the pressure. Pressure lost the vacuum. Vacuum lost the seal. Seal lost the pressure on the cups and boom, there they go. They fall off. That's not what you want. So make sure you have oil. Make sure your belt is tight and not slipping. Make sure you have a good seal. Make sure these are screwed down tight with these little butterfly um basic butterfly uh nuts there make sure all that's done now we're going to turn it on because those are facing right side down they have no way blocking their suction right there so they're going to basically let's watch so we're going to turn it on and it's not going to do anything as in pressuring okay it's not building up pressure why because there's nothing blocking the pressure so why are we not blocking the pressure? Well, what they tell you is you automatically hold it upside down and that helps you build pressure. Let's try that and let's see. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but let's just see what it does. Okay, so they have it upside down or we have it upside down. Let's turn it back on. Okay. Okay, so you saw it built pressure. What that does is you're, cut, you're kinking off this. So when you turn it upside down, you're kinking both hoses. That helps it build pressure. But here's the problem. We have no red caps. You know, if you're an experienced milker and like me with one of my cows, I don't need the red caps anymore. But if you're just starting out or you're new to milking or you're new to this pump especially, you need those red caps. So let's see it, how we would have to do it if we did it without the red caps and how the red caps are such a handicap and cheat that makes it so much easier. So you see the red the red caps do a wonder for your pump when you're working on one at a time look just keep three in and leave one open i i don't keep three in i keep two or none but basically if you keep three in that has one that's actually going to be your suction 
whatever part of uh, the cow, whatever you know, part of the udder that you're working on, I usually work on the back far chamber first and work my way towards me. But that might be the one that I leave open that I pretty much can put on. And then what you do is you just pop these out, put the next one on, come around to the other side, pop this one out, pop this one out. And I do it with one hand with no issue. Now, say you can't do it with one hand. It's okay, you got two. So basically, instead of holding underneath that pump, you may slip your hand over there, pop the red out. All it does, it gives you a cheat to make sure you don't lose suction. That is just huge. So I, I, this pump gave me fits. If you go back and watch my first videos, I milked, I started hand milking because I couldn't get this pump to work. Um, that was the reason why, because I could not keep suction. Or if I could keep suction, I couldn't keep it long enough, or I couldn't keep the pressure up. So it was either the ball bearing, or it's either the oil, or it's either the belt slipping, or it was either the candle is not hooked up exactly right. So all these things are moving parts that they have to be right. If you're not doing each one of those parts, you're not gonna have suction. So now, so just like I said, we just troubleshot all this. So if you're not getting suction, first of all, it might just be the fact that you need to turn your, your claw over. If your claw is turned over and all of a sudden you're building suction, you need to be putting it on the cow when it gets to 0.04, that needs to be, that's your happy spot. 0.04 to 0.06, that's where you need to be when you're milking your cow. You can, of course, have enough suction here to get it on uh, on the teats of a cow, but pretty much you want to stand at 0.4 to 0.6. If you start clipping the red, that's where you just take your pressure gauge and just turn it down. Now, if you do it right, you should never have to turn it down because pretty much it sucks on good. That means either you got it hooked on wrong if you're building too much pressure, or if it's not suction on the cow, then the cow's Utter may not fit perfectly on there or whatever. They make different liners for this. I've never had to use them, but pretty much these should fit because they're universal. So, so let's talk about this. If this is not your suction issue, then you look right here. Is this your suction issue? Do you have this O-ring here tight? Make sure that O-ring there is tight. There's no other moving part in here other than that screw top with that O-ring on. Make sure those two O-rings are together. Make sure this is tight and you should have no problem suction there because these are tight, these are tight, this is tight. All that should be tight on each other. Now, say this is not your problem. Well, let's go to the milk bucket. If you're not sitting level, you're not gonna get suction. So make sure your pump is level. If it's on concrete or if it's on rock, I have mine in the cart because I go on a, on a rock. Basically my dairy barn sits into um, the bottom of my dairy barn is rock so I can clean it out, put more on there, bedding, things like that. So mine's rock, so I'll put them in this big part so that way it keeps it level. So make sure your, your, your container's level. Make sure this suction lid is sucking on. If this is not sucking on, that means this little lip may have a tear in it. You may need to buy a new gasket top for this lid. Because when this starts and you get up to full pressure, you shouldn't be able to get that lid off whatsoever. It should take two hands or just one hard pull to try to get that off of there. Now, Check your ball bearing, check your O-ring. So if that O-ring's on there and your ball bearing's got some oil and it's bouncing up and you can hear it move, then that's not your problem. What, do you even have your hoses right? Remember, your milk never crosses your ball bearing. It goes straight into the tank. This is the only one that goes straight into the tank that's big that can hold the milk pump. So make sure your milker is going straight into your top. So you know you have to have suction from your vacuum. So it goes towards the, the pulsator, which is your, your ball bearing. So make sure it comes from the vacuum into the top of the pulsator. It's got to go through that ball bearing because that's what helps build pressure in this tank, which ultimately sends pressure down this line and tells it to pull it out. Now, that only leaves one spot. Where does this little line here go to the gauge? Well, it's telling what pressure you have in your tank here. If this is not going up, then these hoses may be wrong or maybe this is not connected or this is not connected. So make sure you're full tight on every hose going on there and you should be ready to rock. If all that's right, then your problem is the vacuum or actually the motor. The motor of mine has been reworked already. I hate to tell you that, it's just being honest. But you need to make sure you have no slipping in the belt. You have vacuum oil or gear oil inside this and that helps that turn and make sure you're not losing pressure right here. You're supposed to have pressure coming out here, but you're not supposed to have pressure coming out here. If you have a lot of pressure coming out here, this gasket that sits on this bottom of this plate, 
may need to be replaced too. So that's how it all works. Pretty much, if all that's going, it's foolproof. But I'll tell you this, I cannot specify enough. I paid uh, around four to five hundred dollars for this milker. It's on Amazon. I'll leave a link down to it. You can't do it without these. They're ten dollars. I get no money off this. It's for midi supply. But you need to buy these tops. If you don't have these tops, you're doing yourself a disservice. Now I don't use them. Like I said, now I don't have to. But this is the way that you train yourself to be the best milker with these kind of pumps. I hope this video helps. I know it's just a run through, boring for people who don't want to know how to use a milker. I actually love hand milking a cow. It's more personal to me. I love it. However, nobody wants to hand milk one or two cows, especially when you're on vacation trying to have fun with your family. It's hard to find that person that's going to come in and say, hey, yes, I will spend an hour and a half milking two cows or I'll spend 30 minutes milking one cow, whatever it may be. You get these right, you get this pump right, it takes you two minutes, it takes you more more time to prep her than to actually pump the milk out. So, hope this video helps. If you have any questions about this pump, you can see it in operation. We do have other videos below or basically just pop it up in these screens here about this milk pump, reviews one and two. If you're not getting a lot of these things right, I would not say I recommend this pump unless you're looking for a cheap pump, but just remember you need the little things that we talked about to make it better. So. Hope you enjoyed. Again, thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Please send your questions below and I'll answer those. If you like your con the content that's on this channel, please subscribe. We love being able to communicate with you. God bless you. Happy homesteading, y'all.